I want to talk about the importance of post heating your vinyl um, after any sort of vinyl wrapping. Uh, the reason for that is, well, as you saw in that photo, this bottom corner had peeled away uh, and was starting to lift. Uh, what happened was right after the hood got wrapped, I didn't get a chance to do a proper post heat because it started to rain, even though it wasn't supposed to. And then the rain cooled down the vinyl and it shrank back down. And this entire section here got stretched a lot so that it could go over this, this corner here without having any creases or, or, or folds. Um, so I was able to fortunately fix it. Uh, I was able to lift it up, uh, dry it out with a little bit of heat, pick out the dirt that got underneath of there and then heat it up and then press it back down and I'm surprised. I mean the vinyl's pretty versatile. It's still stuck even after being exposed to about like seven to eight hours of rain before I was able to fix it. All right so now I'm going to go ahead and post heat uh, the rest of the sections that got stretched so that that doesn't happen again when it cools down and because it's a it's starting to rain again now. Uh, this area here the vinyl went on pretty pretty flat so I'm not going to worry about it. Just going to do this uh, the edges as well um, in any of the corners. And then when I'm done doing this, I'm going to put on a glove uh, because it's going to be hot and just go around the underside and make sure it's all pressed into place there as well. So to do this, you'll want to set your heat gun on high and also use an infrared thermometer. Um, this one was 25 bucks from Amazon. It goes from negative 50 Celsius uh, to 750. Yeah, this is the uh, E-Tech City Laser Grip 800. Um, I wanted something versatile. Uh, I've already used it for various things like checking to make sure all my air conditioning uh, vents um, are blowing air out at the, you know, the same temperature, checking the refrigerator temperature, checking my vinyl wrap temperature, uh, checking the stove. Um, pretty easy to use. Just turn it on. Celsius, Fahrenheit, light for at night time. Um, and then you can turn the laser off and on. So pull the trigger, you can see the laser, that's the temperature at that one spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to Celsius. Now, if you don't wanna spend $25, I'll put a link for a $15 one uh, in there as well. It's also got good ratings, it just doesn't measure as high. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead, uh, turn on my heat gun on high. I'm, I, from my experience, I know already that I'm gonna to have to hold it right about here to get, the, uh, to get it to be 90 degrees. So I'm gonna turn it on. And just kind of go back and forth slowly. I want to get it up to 90 degrees. There you go. And it's going to be it's going to be a little bit of a slow process, um, but you want to make sure that you do it. Otherwise, you know you're gonna you're gonna be really unhappy when the winter time comes around and the vinyl starts to pull away. Now, this vinyl is pretty versatile, so I'm not going to worry about it burning. Um, I know it'll take a lot of heat, but you do want to make sure that there are no air bubbles. Um, if you see an air bubble or if you see an air bubble start to form as you're post heating, stop and uh, get rid of that air bubble. You can use uh, a, a really sharp pin to poke a hole and then use your squeegee to work the air out from there. Uh, the problem is if you try to post heat uh, with that air bubble there, it's going to heat up there underneath, it's going to heat up there on top, and then it's going to burn the vinyl. So there you go. That's the importance of why you need to do the post heating. Otherwise, uh, you know, when it gets cold out, the vinyl will revert back to its normal shape. So remember, 90 degrees Celsius will make the, make the vinyl lose its memory. All right. Thanks for watching.